Respected attendees of the workshop, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Nyan Ahmed, and uh, we have Dave Menakoff here as well. We're from Florida Atlantic University. So if you ever want to get sunshine and beach weather in the middle of winter, please come visit us. So our research is on the optimal charging station locations. So the main part of decarbonization, right? You have to have the right infrastructure. So at the, just give an example, from Miami, Florida to San Francisco, California, is 3,000 miles. So you can give a lot of incentive to these companies. The infrastructure doesn't exist. Companies will not adopt these trucks because they cannot go from one point to another. So one of the main reasons we did the study if you see the Federal Highway Administration, there's 140 billion miles per year, total average, the United States truck drivers drive. Imagine how much decarbonization we can do if we can make uh, those trucks a more sustainable energy. So last year, they actually passed a law in the White House, uh, $5 billion for giving subsidies to whichever companies are building this infrastructure for charging stations. So actually this is the raise it up a little bit, it's actually $10 billion total. So what happened, yes, we were talking about venture capitalist money as well. So that triggered uh, venture capitalists to spend $100 billion just on charging stations. And also the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, they also passed laws that by 2027, we do wanna reduce the amount of carbon emissions we do in the United States. Now here's the interesting part. So out of all the shipping that happens inside the United States, uh, so let's say from any state to another state, 65% of freight trucks. So you can think of like railroads, uh, airways, but 65% majority are completed by these freight trucks. We used a model called FR FRLM. So it's fuel refueling location model. And it's called the OD, origin and destination. So main part is you have a truck can it go from point A to point B? And are there charging stations enough on the spot to make sure they can complete that journey? So, so there are three things we looked at. One is the mega charging stations. Those are the ones who can charge a semi truck in 30 minutes. There's actually only 19 of them at this moment in the United States. And most of them are in the West Coast, especially in Nevada. Then we also looked at the DC fast charging stations. Those are actually mostly for cars, but they're they, they can charge a truck, but it'll take much longer. And the last thing we also looked at is the truck stops. So these uh, to build these uh, infrastructure takes a lot of money, a lot of space as well, right? So what we looked at as well, what if you took the existing truck stops that we have in all these states and the interways, and can we put these charging stations there? And what's going to happen if we do that? Methodology, we use something called MILP, Mixed Integer Linear Programming Model. Uh, you can see the equation there we used as well. And the main thing is the industry is claiming it's 500 miles range, but in reality, you have weather conditions, you have geographical terrain, you might be going up a mountain in Colorado. And then you also have traffic, especially in New York and DC and stuff. So you're gonna put all those in considerations. So we took 300 miles as a truck in complete distance from point A to point B. Our data sources was from the federal uh, United States Department of Energy and United States Department of Transportation. So all our data is secondary data, but this is all the data uh, uh, produced by the government. So just an example, from Texas to Raleigh, North Carolina, as you can see, it's about close 1200 miles. Now, uh, what we did for each one, we looked at mega chargers, we looked at DC fast chargers, we also looked at truck stops for each one. Can it make it or not? Using the equation that I showed before. These are examples, I'm just gonna, results. These are the main OD points. As I mentioned, OD was origin and destination. These are the major OD points currently in the United States. Now, when you map them out in the highways, this is what the routes look like, right? So if you have to go from this state to there, you gotta make sure in between every 300 miles, 
you do have a charger in order to complete that distance. So this is what the current mega charging stations are. As you can see, they're mostly in the West Coast and there's a couple of them on the Northeast. So with the current mega charging, it's actually not possible. Again, our research will show that to complete those OD pairs. Then we also looked at DC fast charging stations. So on average, if we were to charge a with a DC fast charger, at the bare minimum, it's gonna take three hours to charge it. And also gonna remember, uh, if you're waiting for another driver to uh, charge their truck, you gotta wait a little bit longer to charge yours. So this is what we did. So we said, in order to make this possible, we need to look at existing truck stops. So compared to if you see before, the mega charging station does very few. If you were to put mega chargers where the truck stops are, then you can actually go ahead and complete most of these origin destination distances. So right now, the, what, the way we have it, the mega charging station feasibility, it's only 2% in the not entire United States. And if you were to do it with DC fast charging stations, then operable is 69% and not operable is 30%. And again, this is operable in theory, right? Because these are DC fast charging stations, which will take average three hours to charge a truck. But what we really want to do is we want to make sure that we put mega charging stations so it only takes 30 minutes for those trucks to charge. So this is a very interesting one. So when we looked at if you go from 2%, if you do truck stops, it goes from 2% to 71%. That's a huge jump. Imagine how much decarbonization we can do if we convert these truck stops into mega charging stations for the semi trucks. Now, why did it say 28% not operable? Because remember, Origin also has to have a charger, right? So if you were to, let's say, start from a major city, most major cities do not have a gigantic truck stop in there, right? They're usually a little further away from the city. So in order to complete it, you can, if you have a mega charging stations in your city as well. So there's two ways to do it. Either the government can have major cities saying, okay, these are the main ODs, which I showed earlier in the orange uh, circles. All these cities need to have a mega charger in there. The government can put a policy for that. That's one option. Or let's say big companies like Amazon or Pepsi, what they can do, if they're in big cities like New York, Miami, Los Angeles, they can have their own charging station in those origins. That way they're fully charged and then they can go ahead and complete the distance in, the, uh, in their long haul. So the main thing was in our research that can you complete long hauls or not? So we did, uh, there was about 2 million routes we initially took, and then we put it down. You're gonna travel at least over 300 miles. You're gonna go across the state, and these are the major ones we're gonna look at. And once we did that, we did uh, the top 80%. That's the research we did for our charging station. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, as Nihat said, I'm David Menikoff. Um, I was his supervisor on his PhD. Uh, we found it quite interesting uh, as we develop this. And uh, I think it works great with uh, what Juan Pablo just uh, finished, but on a whole US scale rather than uh, Holland in terms of, let's say the expanse. And, um, you know, this whole thing is that we just don't have the feasibility uh, to run it with mega charging stations that make it possible. Uh, the theoretical aspect of 69%, uh, it sounds good, but we have the limitation of, and this was part of the, um, let's say the potential problems of saying, yes, we can do 69% of routes, however, if you say it's gonna take three hours to charge, you have a capacity 
of eight trucks per day. And so that really is not going to have the true impact. But of these origin and destination, we can actually complete the routes. However, the volume just is not going to be there at this point in time. Uh, same with the, the truck stops, uh, where 72%, again, theoretically, you could run a truck from one origin to one of those destination points. But if we start getting a conversion without expanding that network and moving to the mega chargers, uh, we're not going to get the volume to make it work. Um, again, a thousand different routes. Uh, wanted to see the top amount of volumes. We were talking, what is that there? Two, 26 uh, million truckloads that are on the road now. Can we move them again? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no, uh, I think is our full result. Um, but the big thing, again, we're talking about decarbonization um, using uh, just standard, and I know this was a discussion earlier of you know how much do you um, allocate per uh, ton mile, but again, if we can build the network to swap things over, you can see the results of um, reduction in um, metric tons of, uh, of CO2 output. So we're looking at least at a very slow start uh, from what our research is showing. Um, it's probably gonna be a lot less um, depending on region of the US as well. I'm not going to go into a whole lot, but um, just down here in the truck stops, you can see that, okay, the Midwest has a decent volume of truck stops out in the West uh, because of the low population and the expanse. You're just not going to get the roots there. And uh, a same down in uh, Texas where they like oil and uh, doing everything to not use uh, electric power. Um, so our implications, uh, academia, we hope we're adding to theory here, addressing the literature gap. Uh, a couple of papers are looking at theoretical placement of uh, charging stations of where you would want to place them. We looked at where the existing stations are uh, and existing infrastructure, and is it sufficient? Uh, should we convert it over? Uh, industry is certainly looking at um, the infrastructure, uh, the vehicle manufacturers. Again, we heard Volvo uh, talking yesterday. Uh, but then do you, once you get the manufacturers on board, are you going to get the operators to also get on board? Um, because, you know, certainly they want their trucks running on the road, uh, just like the airlines. If they're not flying, if they're not moving, they're not making revenue. And what truck driver wants to have a three hour break uh, and not get paid for it uh, every 300 miles. Uh, so we've got many uh, aspects there uh, from the government uh, and policy points of view, you know, the objectives point in the right direction uh, with the emissions reductions with the expanse beyond US borders, which we know of uh, depending on governments uh, changing every four years, um, sometimes positive, sometimes uh, against um, these global agreements. But uh, policy-wise, uh, as Niha noted right at the beginning, uh, the government funding to support infrastructure locations and uh, creating incentives um, are going to eventually affect uh, that ability to adopt. So some of the quick limitations, um, we use the uh, projected totals uh, from the uh, freight um, framework. Uh, basically, what's going to happen by 2050 is everything that we just did, volume is going to double. And so with that is going to be output of even more CO2 if we don't convert. Uh, we did use that 300 mile of the um, 
range of the vehicle. Again, being very conservative, I know you just asked the question of uh, Juan Pablo about the temperature and ambient temperatures. And again, we know uh, running in Florida in the heat is gonna reduce. Uh, running in the cold is going to reduce. And so I think battery technology uh, is going to increase uh, and uh, become more efficient, but we just don't have uh, right now the mega chargers in place, uh, the DC fast chargers. And another uh, aspect limitation was we didn't look at, because of the number, of where some of these DC fast chargers are, meaning can you actually get a semi-truck into that location? Uh, example in Boca Raton where we're at, um, there is a couple of fast chargers, but they're in the shopping mall in a parking garage. And there's no way you're gonna get a semi-truck in there at all. And uh, so, you know, Okay, cross that one off the list. So we would have to go literally station by station to go, is it feasible? Um, and again, uh, you know, one of the issues is the weight of the battery that again discussed yesterday um, is going to mean reduced cargo load and uh, payload, which is reduced revenues for the truck operators. Again, is that going to limit them uh, to their uh, decision to move to electric? Yeah, Q&A? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, just quick future research, um, looking at battery, looking at uh, theoretical versus the actual capacity that we just uh, presented today. Um, and what are some of these uh, longer term uh, carbon footprint uh, implications? So we've got a lot more to do. And uh, we're glad to have shared it with you and uh, at least wish us all some warm weather. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Nihat and David. Very much appreciated. Uh, from some more questions. Yeah. Uh, just quick, well, um, if you calculate what, what investment is required to be able to get that, we had some basic numbers, but we did not um, at this point. It was just, is it feasible with what is out there already? How much could we actually convert over? And how many of those origin destination pairs across the US? Um, and so, no, we did not look at the, the number of what we need to put in. That's certainly- the numbers, like the, the amount of uh, what a company should invest to create in one charging station for me, right? Yeah, so it was like eight to $10 million. Per mega charger. Per mega stations, yeah. Because, yeah, the thing is, like, our thing was, hey, like, use the existing truck stops, but you got to bring in all the grid and everything. So I did, like, some kind of preliminary work, and I found out it was going to be 8 to $10 million. All right? I think uh, I was looking at, like, six or something like that, at least, like, six or eight minimum. So it was 8 to $10 million per charging station. Now, here's the thing. Government already approved $10 billion, and there's a VC money coming at $100 million. So I think that if you do it the right way, and the main thing is, as I was saying, like which state matters. So you cannot just give hundred billion dollars to fifty states equally. It's not going to work. You got to give it in the right places. So the even in the middle of the United States, probably is the most important ones. 